Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see you and again, uh, uh, myself or any of our panelists. If you have trouble hearing, just uh, you know, chime right in and we'll, and we'll speak up. Give us a little uh, hint that we got to speak a little bit louder. We will do so. Okay. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with the panel of uh, uh, six folks from uh, the non-public accounting world. If you are, uh, if you are an accounting major. And, uh, and on the finance side, we do have a couple of banks represented with us tonight. I'm gonna have the panelists introduce themselves. And the way I'm gonna start is have them talk a little bit about their careers. Because I think, for example, accounting majors are quite familiar with the career path inside public accounting. And probably finance majors sort of know what the investment banking track looks like. But here we have uh, <coughs> some career paths that you might see that are a little bit different. It might be interesting just to see how they got to where they got, and then we'll talk about various things in their programs within their company, uh, internships, core programs, describe some of the rotational programs, etc. But I'll hold off on that, and first I'll let you know who we have and what companies they're from. Now, we don't have all the companies uh, that we, we deal with that don't know that are represented here right now. And one I was going to mention was BASF, and then I found out BASF is here on the panel now because we had a little change. But J&J, &J, Merck, Comcast, Verizon, there's a variety of companies that aren't here with us tonight, but they have programs quite similar. And know that we have connections, uh, connections that seem to be improving each year with a variety of companies. But here's six very good representative companies of, uh, that will give you an idea of some career paths and sort of the corporate finance, accounting finance type of track. So we'll start uh, furthest from me, and you can introduce yourself, and we'll just bring in. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Brian McDougall. Uh, I am Senior Director of Local Digital at Univision Communications, which is a Spanish language media firm. Um, if you can't hear me very well, I'm still kind of getting my voice back. I was at the, the Mayweather Alvarez fight in Las Vegas on Saturday <laughs> night, so um, lost a little bit of my voice there. But um, I'm, I've been uh, with Univision for about three years. Um, Graduated Villanova in 2008. Um, right after school, I worked as a uh, financial consultant for Huron Consulting Group out in Chicago. And, um, and I've had a couple different roles, um, sort of corporate strategy type roles within, within Univision over the last few years. Um, and so I'm excited to talk to you guys about media and, and consulting and my sort of uh, strange path through corporate finance and accounting. Hello, my name is Abdul McBride. I am a uh, class of 1996 Villanova graduate. I uh, currently work at the Campbell Soup Company as a senior manager of U.S. Soup in their uh, financial planning and analysis uh, role. Been there about five years. Uh, I did start as a CPA, did work in public accounting for three, went back to graduate school, and then had multiple rotations uh, through Kraft Fruits slash Nabisco, working in plants, working in headquarters, uh, you know, multiple different roles of working with marketers, business teams, etc. So, be happy to talk about that as uh, we get into it. Good evening. I'm Rob Anders from the Boeing Company, I'm senior manager of the Vertical Lift Division uh, for finance. Uh, let's see. I'm an undergrad from Penn State. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, my career traversed a lot of aerospace companies, even though my undergrad was in uh, financial investments. So you may find that in your uh, careers where you start off one direction, go into another. Uh, worked for the GE company in the financial management program and graduated that program. And my career wound a lot around a lot of finance positions, uh, uh, scheduling, uh, estimating, subcontract management, a uh, bit of accounting thrown in there, and a lot of budgeting, uh, which we call earned value in aerospace. Um, and ended up at Boeing and climbed the corporate ladder. Good evening, Jim Stone from BASF. Uh, I have a background uh, in criminal law and accounting. I am a CPA, uh, CFE as well. Uh, started a long time ago, uh, prior to when you guys were on the planet. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, did some uh, criminal law undercover work with the U.S. government right out of school. Transitioned into forensics from there. Uh, worked in the uh, commercial side with uh, Nabisco Brands in the uh, 80s and 90s, and uh, various other companies. Uh, currently oversee as VP of Internal Audit and Asset Protection, function for the Americas for BASF. So, roughly about 36 years of experience in different areas. Uh, open to discuss pretty much anything. Give you an idea. 
how you get where you want to get. Just by the way, uh, you might know what a CPA is. A CFE is a certified fraud examiner. And so he had a, a, a background in forensics, as you heard. So you get, try to get the credentials whenever you pick a special field. My name is Marissa Tilton. I'm um, Assistant Vice President of Finance at Barclays. I graduated in 2008 from the University of Miami, uh, studied finance, and started immediately at Lehman Brothers, which then almost immediately a week later became Barclays um, in their grad program. I've worked on the municip municipal finance desk as well as high grade and hybrid desks. I did a short stint of a couple months in Johannesburg, South Africa, training our pilot offshore team on finance. And I currently am on the strategic uh, credit portfolio management desk. I'm Karen Safran. I am actually a graduate of Princeton University. Uh, my first job out of college was working for Lockheed Martin. I did that for two years um, in their planning group. Um, I then joined the bank. Um, I, I say the bank, Bank of America, um, and I'm coming up on my 10-year anniversary. I've had various roles while I'm there, all in the finance group. I was a finance and an accounting major, um, and I spent time in our retail bank, which is consumer, um, your checking account and savings, that I'm sure you're very familiar with. Um, I've also spent time in the commercial finance group, supporting middle market companies. Um, most recently, I was spent a couple years in our regulatory capital group, um, acting as an internal consultant with our sales and trading groups around some of the Basel regulatory reform and um, actually just about a month ago I got a new job and I'm running um, our corporate planning and allocations group. So I have a couple of uh, experiences across the, the bank so I'm happy to share that perspective with you today. Great. So we have quite a variety here which makes uh, my life actually easier in some respects because sometimes if everybody is the same on the panel, and I ask one question, you don't want to hear the same answer six times. And so I will still say that's sort of our rule. If I ask, like, what's your rotational program like? If it's pretty much the same as the one you can say, well, here, we're basically this, but a little bit different here, or something like that. But I think I'll actually start with that. I know we have a lot of freshmen and sophomore with us, but I'm not going to go to internships first. I'm first going to ask, about starting, is there a core rotational program or something like that? And, and we'll just reverse the order, Taryn, have you start. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yes, I actually am a graduate of one of our rotational programs. Our acronym that we use is the FMAP program. We've hired, um, over the last three or four years, a bunch of Villanova grads, both accounting and finance majors. Um, the, it, it's a two-year rotational program. We tend to start with an internship for rising seniors. Uh, the intent of the internship program is to convert to um, full-time hires upon graduation. And essentially the goal of the program is to have all of the students do a one-year rotation um, that you are placed into. And then at the completion of that one-year rotation, be put into another group that is completely different and, and separate from the first experience that you've had in, in your first year. And the intent is really to develop different school skill sets um, you can be placed anywhere from something like the wealth management support area in finance to tax, a tax group, uh, to supporting, say, a marketing or, or HR function from a finance standpoint. So it's a uh, program that is managed full time by folks at the bank, and there is focus on in continuing education as well. So there's a curriculum that you need to complete while you're in the program. So again, just development for young college grads into our mid and senior level management one day is the goal of the program. I would say Barclays program is very similar that it is a two year rotational program. Um, however, we are different in that you rotate within the department that you are hired into. So you're either hired as a finance grad, um, an HR grad, operations, compliance. Uh, you do have a core curriculum that you are expected to complete and it's really a fast track or hoping uh, that you will you know proceed to senior management okay difficult question from the BSF perspective we have uh, numerous uh, rotational programs we hire uh, on average about 135 uh, young professionals each year into the programs uh, it's HR uh, engineering accounting finance 
oh boy, supply chain, uh, this goes on and on, uh, executive, what we call executive uh, MBA finance program. Uh, the programs range anywhere from two to three years. Uh, some have a six month or, or a 12 month international assignment uh, related to uh, the program as well. Uh, you are brought in similar to, uh, to Bank of America's program, usually through the internship program, uh, where you come as either a sophomore into junior, junior into senior year, you can, you can intern uh, in the various programs and then obviously have the option if you do well to, uh, to place in as a full time. Uh, the program is driven also with uh, different learning experiences through uh, what I'll call supplemental training in leadership, teamwork, uh, language skills, things of this nature, which is required of the candidates as well. Uh, so that's ongoing while you're going through the process and doing your rotations in different areas, different locations of the world and different locations in North America. Uh, you always have an internal mentor, uh, which is someone uh, recently out of the program, so that's someone you can link with and, and work with. And you also have an executive mentor that uh, is at a VP level or above that is working with you as well while you're, while you're in the program. So. Uh, that's a general idea of how the programs are, depending accounting, finance, et cetera. There's going to be <laughs> definers in these programs as well that are specific to your area of study. Is that like six month rotations? The rotations vary as well. Like engineering is every six months for two years. Uh, the accounting is, the, it's, it, there's two eight month rotations, two four month rotation, and then a 12 month rotation. So again, there, you know, HR is going to be, uh, again, uh, every six and six with a one year, so it depends on the area. Supply chain is, is gonna be a three year, a little bit different as well. And those have flexibility in them. So if you're in Germany for a year, but then the project you know, goes on, you could stay an additional three months. So okay. they're, they're all gonna vary, but never less than four months okay. is, is the rotation. Let's see, at the Boeing Company, uh, you enter finance into a rotation program, it's mandatory. And uh, the first level rotation programs are three one-year rotations uh, where you get tracked through various functions of finance, usually that more fit your aptitude. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, analyzing and, and coming to us with what, you know, you, you hired in for, whether it was scheduling, accounting, budgeting, uh, et cetera, project management. Uh, at that point, uh, at the end of your three years, uh, you know, we determine, you know, uh, bilaterally a fit for where you want to go uh, for that stage of your career. And um, let's see, there's a second rotation program called the BCFP, and that's more of a fast track program uh, where you do a series of three month assignments uh, for over two years. Uh, and we get you uh, more of a, uh, a broader sense of what's going on in the company, and there's also off-site uh, rotations that go on with that. So I'll be the one who says at Campbell Soup there is no rotational program. Uh, it's really, you're entered in, you're hired into a specific job, and then it's really uh, incumbent upon the individual themselves to, uh, nobody's gonna come and tap you on the shoulder and say it's time to move to a new position. It's incumbent upon yourself to court, cart, chart your own course from your career standpoint. Um, you know, so the, some of the key things as you go through this is, you know, you know, you, the peers you come in with, you know, what their strengths and opportunities are. If I came into sales finance and I, I need brand finance, so it's really incumbent upon building your own blocks. So, you know, help work obviously along the way with mentors, your manager will help you through this process. HR, there's a finance competency website, skill blocks you should have. Um, so really, you know, I would say at the junior level positions, you do move in about 18 to 24 months, we'll look, look to move people through the organization through various roles. So we do not have a formal one, it's really uh, dependent upon the individual themselves. Great, and um, with Univision, last but not least, um, you know, we're unique in the sense that it's a relatively new program. Um, it's actually the first year that we have a finance, a true formal uh, finance rotational program. Uh, it's, it's three to six month rotations through uh, at least three or four of our divisions, whether it be network television, local television, radio, digital, online, mobile. Um, and so you get a broad exposure to the whole organization uh, and, and you know, provided that you perform well uh, and you develop relationships along the way, the idea is then you, you, you join one of those divisions full time and then, and then ascend through the organization in that way. Um, but, but that said also, um, you know, Univision is, is 
working hard to become a, a more horizontal, uh, you know, more of a flat organization where, where even if you came in in just a typical traditional full-time role, uh, we want to be able to move folks, talented folks uh, from division to division pretty seamlessly. And, and you know, in my two and a half years, I can, I can say that we've done a good job of getting there. I'm just gonna do one really short clarification. I'm guessing most of you know what five of these six companies do, but I'm not 100% sure people are familiar with what BASF does. So could you just, for like 30 seconds or a minute, just give us an idea? 30 seconds. Oh, you know, just a quick over- A $100 billion yeah, dollar company, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I will try. Uh, we are roughly, uh, depending on the exchange rate, about a $100 billion chemical company, but we also uh, have, depending on how you slice it, about 26 different uh, businesses that we're involved with, anywhere from uh, agricultural products, uh, colors uh, and coatings, uh, which it is automotive in addition to, uh, you know, industrial and such. Uh, Englehart Industries we acquired in 06 and Degusa Construction Chemicals, so in the construction industry, uh, we're also involved in the catalyst industry. Uh, we do uh, precious metals trading in uh, Island, Shanghai, London, uh, and, and Moscow. Uh, so we are large enough in, for example, the metals trading industry with our catalyst division that if we make certain specific moves on a given day, we can actually move the market. So we have to be very cautious there because of the size. Uh, so, I mean, our agricultural products is uh, obviously driving hard on the project of the challenge between now and uh, 2050 to feed the world. Uh, which is part of what we're aligning with the different companies. We also, in, in Europe and Asia uh, and parts of South America, have an oil and gas, which, uh, which is feedstock for us into the chemical industry. So we are quite large in oil and gas as well, not in the U.S., but every other part of the world. Uh, so BSF is quite diverse in, uh, in the different areas of business that you could be considering uh, getting involved with. I'll go back down to the end. I'll say, uh, you know, maybe we can talk just a little bit about training and mentoring and, and how what what how your career path might work and how you get assistance and, and how you seek out, you know, to develop yourself. Just a little bit on that. Sure. Um, I think that Univision is, is really recently, so I keep saying really recently because we have a new CEO who came in right around the time that I joined, Randy Falco, and he's, he's a real visionary within the media, organiz uh, the media industry. And he's really transformed the entire culture and, and the organization. Um, and so now, I mean, we've had this influx of young talent, um, you know, folks with MBAs, folks who have come from prestigious consulting firms, and they're, and they're really throughout the organization. And so from a mentoring and uh, you know, training perspective, uh, regardless of which division you would ultimately be joining, um, you know, pretty much at every level in the organization, you're starting to see training where uh, you, know, you have day-to-day -day interactions with a, with a senior director or a vice president um, you know, in, in helping, kind of helping you grow and learn. You get exposure from you know, being involved in, in the key meetings uh, you know, of your organization to, to working sort of cross-functionally, which I think is a really important, you know, within departments. Um, which I think is an also important, a really important part of development. So um, I think that those are definitely important parts of, of, of training and mentorship. Uh, I would say Camels, I think we've taken a step forward. When I uh, joined about five years ago, it was really, you learn on the job. You learn uh, who had the job before you, what your boss will direct you, but we have uh, under our new uh, CFO, he's taken a pretty ambitious step on how to make finance more effective. So. Uh, they partner with Drexel to build a training course, actually courses, uh, how to cost a product. There's a course. You actually would go to Drexel, uh, groups of 20 students. You take various uh, courses taught by Drexel. All that is then put online, so there's a repository of 200 finance courses you could take. Uh, they've also taken an approach of they sort of have mapped out all the finance jobs throughout the organization and said, if you want to be this senior manager in brand finance, here's the strengths you should have and then linking it to you know, what jobs you would need beforehand to try to help you chart your course, and then what career courses you can take on the line that would help you uh, exceed the way. Uh, the other biggest thing would be really just, you know, once again, echoing the mentoring program, finding somebody in the organization you can trust and have an open conversation with, uh, not feel like you have to filter your conversation. So uh, really somebody, you know, maybe one or two levels above you as a sort of an informal mentor and then you know, higher up as a, a more formal mentor that you know you can you can help you with your way. So, 
that's how uh, Campbell's is trying to help you uh, onboard now to the organization. So at uh, Boeing, it's a mix of uh, formal training, uh, desk operating procedures. We're just getting into what's called Bluetooth, which is like a YouTube, so it's video vignettes. Maybe it's something you're doing in your assignment that you, uh, you need to learn. Um, also, a uh, very empowering company, so there is some on-the-job uh, training where you get in, you have to problem solve, and you have to uh, make value or add value to the company uh, in your assignment quickly. Um, we assign peer mentors uh, in the finance department, uh, so that means somebody that's uh, close to where you are entry, but you know, like three years into the company. Um, we also have uh, senior mentors and then uh, career mentors, which are more management and senior management. Um, let's see, we have something called the REACH program, which uh, not only helps with uh, mentoring in, in finance, but it's also a, a social organization where you can do things like uh, outreach to the community, uh, whitewater rafting, and you know all kinds of great events that they do. Uh, I've been on a couple. They're, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and then uh, mentoring, there's formal and informal. And uh, my advice to you is no matter where you end up, ask lots of questions and figure out uh, what you want to do. And f as far as assignments goes, find somebody who's doing that and then go mentor with them. Just go ask, hey, you know, you got 30 minutes I can get on your calendar and talk. You know, I'll buy you a soda or a cup of coffee. So highly recommended no matter where you end up, do your own uh, networking to get a mentor. Uh, pays off big. Yeah, if you buy your mentor lunch, they'll always show up. <laughs> I never got lunch. Guaranteed. Coffee, though. Coffee. Yeah. I don't think coffee. coffee. I guess to quote Michael Douglas from a movie I just recently saw about the students, you guys ain't easy. And I like that. It's refreshing. Uh, you know, mentorships are important. Uh, we have them. You know, I think almost all companies have them. You have people that have recently gone through the experiences that you're going through. You have executive mentors that can open doors for you and create opportunities for you. But the reality is, it's it's on you as the as the graduate. Uh, you're coming in, and we talk. I talk about all of our programs and how they're they're somewhat defined. But, you know, I personally prefer the student that takes the program and says, okay, how am I going to mold this to myself? How am I going to take this and make this mine? And the way to do that is normally through the conversations you have with your executive mentors because you say, listen, I'm looking for more. I, I, I want to challenge in this area or that area. Uh, can we weave that into the program? Can we extend the program? Uh, things such as this. Uh, you know, all generations have, have their desires. Uh, you know, you guys have incredible access to information. You're able to do research uh, that I could have only dreamed of going back 30 years. So you're well informed. You know, so rarely do I sit with some of the people that I mentor, uh, and I'm telling them something they don't already know because they've done their homework. So really, I, I, that's that's sort of what I look for uh, in the process, and what I think you should be doing when you when you, when you leave school is, you know, what's next for you. Now, a company like BSF, we're, we're German-owned, so we're a European company in theory. So we pay, for example, 100% of all your future education, whether it's your master's, your PhD, multiple PhD studies, if you're in the fields of science, like my youngest daughter is, is uh, using the BSF program now, going to work for two years uh, in, in, bio, in uh, microbiology labs with the intention to go into a uh, a specific program for masters followed by PhD, which is paid for by BSF. Uh, she takes leave of absence with a stipend, and then she comes back to the company and then works for a three-year window to effectively earn that, you know, that support from the company. If she decides to leave, she just pays back a prorated portion based on how long she stays. There's programs like this uh, throughout the company uh, with international and domestic, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, but I think that's more like to the European drive, where European companies are very big on education and continued education. Uh, in my area now, uh, I'm looking for people to continue with their credentials. You know, you never stop learning. So you want to keep going forward. If you're an accounting major, you want to get your CPA uh, quickly. You know, the exam is, is not that difficult now. Uh, being that I took it in the 70s, it was harder then. Uh, that's a joke if you didn't get that. Uh, you know, but there's a lot of credentials out there. If you're in IT, the CISAs, uh, 
you know, CIAs, you know, et cetera. You want to constantly be evolving and growing as a person, as a professional, such that when that opportunity comes, you can have that discussion with whoever is relevant and say, you know, I'm right for that. You know, let's, that's a challenge I want. Uh, so as much as we talk about the mentors at all levels, don't forget that you have a responsibility in that equation. Uh, and we're not just going to grab you and pull you through. There are going to be other students, if you're not willing to make that, uh, make that step and have that drive, they're going to step in front of you. So something for, for you to think about uh, as you get closer and closer to your, to your graduation. But uh, that's probably all I can say on that. Um, finance, for both the grad program as well as the internship program, you are given a mentor. Um, this mentor has usually been in your shoes. They've either been through the grad program or are currently working in finance. They can give you, you know, their, res uh, their aspect of their experience. But there's, as um, you said, there's also the initiative that you need to take to ask people to be a mentor. I mean, I've reached out to senior people, senior women within finance to see what their perspective is and if they have any um, recommendations for what, what I need to do to get where they are. Um, how can I make myself more competitive. Uh, in regards to continuing education, there's a vast um, amount of information online. We have online classes. Say you feel that you're weak in equities or you're weak in credit default swaps and you want to learn more. You can either take an online class or there are also um, full day classes or half day classes that are offered for all Barclays employees um, to really learn more about the products. You know, I think innately different people are comfortable with different spectrums of, of outreach to a possible mentor, um, and I think that's fine. I think I completely agree with what was said in terms of you needing to take that initiative upon yourself, but at the same time, we do have people who are more extroverted than others and maybe have the same quality of things to offer and to say, but just aren't as uh, perhaps confident at that stage in their career to, to propel themselves to ask for it. So we do a few things, um, you know, similar to what has been mentioned, we have formal and informal programs, but within the FMAP program, as I referenced, we actually do, um, as part of the performance plan that an associate builds for itself within the FMAP, for themselves within the FMAP program, we require at least a monthly contact with two different levels of um, executives, whether mid-level or senior level, that the FMAP associate go and proactively seek out, but it is a actual performance plan requirement. And then that um, relationship is also given a, mentee, a mentor that has been an FMAP, um, either currently or previously. And then outside of the, the program, we have something within what we call our CFO group, or our chief financial officer group, that is a both one-on-one -on -one mentor mentee relationship, but also something new that we introduced recently is called the pod program, where you have about six associates that come together on a monthly basis that are from all areas of the CFO group uh, and perhaps did not know each other before, maybe did or had some interaction, but I think, uh, and a senior level leader chairs that group and it's a smaller group contact so that you can discuss issues within your areas of the bank and just get a sense of what are things that are going on in somewhere totally across the bank that I might not have even had any exposure to before. So we talk about hot topics um, and I've actually learned a lot personally in being in that group. Then there's also um, outside or, or outside of the CFO group, there is some other mentor programs that you can get involved in. So we're very heavily centric on that. I think from a personal aspect, if I were to say what has helped me the most, um, ironically being a part of the recruiting effort, um, I mentioned I was a graduate of Clemson University. The executive that first actually promoted me to a manager level, I met through the FMAP recruiting program on a campus visit. We got to talking. She recalled and remembered me when I, you know, a couple years down the road was looking for a new opportunity. And so that's an example of something that was rather informal. And she has now become a mentor. I've moved on to several jobs since then, but as a result of that. So I think on the job, as, as was mentioned, is something that you don't necessarily think of as formal, but if you use it as an opportunity, um, it can pay off in the future. I'm going to do a quick summary. Um, 
if this were a panel of, I'm an accounting professor, if this were a panel of accounting firms, I wouldn't have spent this much time asking the questions I just asked because it's a relatively structured uh, career path. But even in a relatively structured career path, you still want a mentor. But I'm just gonna say here, you absolutely. There's, these are companies with tens of thousands of employees. How do you get recognized? You, how, how do you build your network? That's a real big part of it because it's, it's just not clear where you're gonna be sometimes one and two, three years from where you are right now. Whereas again, I go to the public accounting or law firm, you, know, you sort of know what the path is. And so I spent a little time saying, you know, this is something they've all said, you gotta take initiative. You gotta, you know, they're gonna supply folks, but you have to take some of that initiative yourself uh, with the companies. And again, there's lots of different possibilities there. So you check it out. Uh, just piggybacking off some, uh, something somebody uh, said, um, would you invest $10 in your career? And this was by a very high level uh, corporate lawyer speaking to some folks I was at something with. And they all looked at him and said, of course. He goes, good. Have you ever spent $10 to take a manager to lunch? Or if you can think about this rotational program, if your next rotation is with the marketing group or something, you don't know much about it, call them up. Ask them to go out to lunch to find out a little about what you do. There's just lots of opportunities like that. Uh, the coffee break sounds a little more efficient, but you know he gave that example. For 10 bucks, you can you know learn quite a bit in one hour talking with somebody about what they do and what their group's all about and stuff like that. So uh, we spent some time there. Now I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm just going to say, um, is mobility important? Uh, you have to be willing to move. Uh, with these rotation programs, should I expect to move? every year or two. Uh, and then there was already some mention of international. You could throw in those possibilities if you like. And I'll just open it up to somebody who wants to talk about whether it is or it isn't at your company. And, and then we can just carry a little bit informally from there. Anybody? I'd start out, I'd say, sure, helping you being mobile helps you in your career. I'd say, you know, if you're willing to take challenging assignments, and you know, I've moved from Every two years, my first ten career, ten years in uh, Nabisco and Kraft, just because that's where the you can stay in headquarters. There's only so much you can do, but to get out to the field, locations aren't great, but it's two years you can do it. I mean, those people are the ones who are you know all of our career forms. Are you willing to relocate? Yes or no? If you mark no, nothing's going to happen to you. You can stay in headquarters, but you have more opportunities. People will come to you more if you're willing to relocate either internationally or across the uh, country. I. From our perspective, from Bank of America's perspective, we are a global company, have, have less, uh, certainly more of a domestic presence, but if I speak specifically to our the FMAP program, we have rotational uh, abilities in, certain, in, in many cities, Charlotte, New York, Boston, um, some in California now that we are, are part of, have, have bought countrywide mortgage company. Um, so I think mobility is certainly a possibility if you're interested. And I think in terms of career-wise, I would say that I think of mobility both geographic and then just new experience-wise. And similar to what this gentleman said, you know, in my first five years at the bank, I think I had six different jobs. And I think complacency is um, a, a definitely a, a blockade within a career. And so. I would just say that I think you need to always be willing to entertain a new experience, whether you perceive it to be the next best move or whether you perceive or whether it's a lateral move. I think it sometimes shows um, the willingness to think outside of the box and get new experiences. So whether it's geographic or not, there's certainly opportunities. I, I personally had an opportunity um, to do the countrywide transition, spent a couple years in LA, also did our Merrill Lynch transition in New York. Um, and so, you know, that was coming out of a period of, of a lot of mergers. We're now in a more normalized BAU environment where I don't know that we necessarily foresee some of that opportunities coming up. Um, but the point is, is that I was always willing and I think it served to help build my network. I think mobility should really be viewed as a way to expand your experience. Um, I, for myself, have worked or supported four different desks in my past five years at Berkeley. I view this as a benefit because I've been able to have exposure to uh, numerous different products. Um, 
I can find out what I like to work with and what I don't really like to work with. So if you don't see it as gaining more experience, think of it as a way to find out what you don't like and to really find out, have a better idea of what you do like. Um, Barclays definitely offers mobility to move internationally. We are, you know, an English bank. So obviously there's the opportunity there. Um, I last year worked for a couple months in Johannesburg and there was numerous opportunities to work there. Um, I definitely think people should really view it as a benefit to expand your experience and should try to pursue it as much as you can. Yes, for, uh, for BSF, uh, even though it's a personal thing, whether you're, whether you're mobile or not, it's, it, it's, it's favored to be uh, fully mobile, as they refer to it, versus limited mobility. Uh, obviously, as you go through the stages of your life, your mobility changes. Uh, but early in your career, uh, it's probably viewed very favorably to be fully mobile. Uh, if you look at the PDP program specifically, uh, you're going to be moved, uh, whether it's four months, eight months, one year, etc. So you are going to be transferred to different parts uh, of the United States, different parts of the world, uh, depending on the program you're in. Uh, so that, that is a requirement. Like in engineering, uh, BSF spends uh, on average three to four billion a year in capital. So, you know, we're building plants, uh, but I, last I checked, not too many of those are in New Jersey. So, you know, a lot of the engineers like want to build things, you know, they want to get their hands dirty. Uh, so they're going to get out there and end up uh, in China or, you know, uh, India or, you know, we're, spend, we're starting a project down in Louisiana next year. I think it's um, like a couple billion dollar project down there. So, you know, we're in the Gulf, heavily invested in the Gulf, uh, in the U.S., uh, different parts of Mexico. Central America. So depending on what your field of study is could dictate how much mobility you really uh, are looking at. Uh, in my uh, function itself, uh, I have a global swap program that I run. So uh, that's anywhere from one to three years. So I'll take a person from my group in the US, maybe if they want to swap into Brazil or into Singapore or Shanghai or into, uh, into uh, Lou, which is outside Frankfurt in Germany, you know, I'm going to move people bring a person in, swap a person out. Some people want to do three years, some want to do less. Uh, it's really all about what's, what we need to customize for the individual, for the experience they're trying you know, to achieve. So, uh, but the world's a small place now. You know, it's shrinking uh, every day, whether we like that or not. So th there's just so much going on that I find that language skills and ability to, to react to those opportunities that might require you to relocate uh, is a big advantage to have. Yeah, and um, I won't speak about Univision, but uh, my prior life as a consultant, which I, by the way, I think is a very, very good way to start your career. It builds a really strong foundation of core skills, so happy to talk about that also. But um, uh, my first six months at, out of school, literally, you know, got out to Chicago, got off the plane. First project was six months in Fargo, North Dakota. So um, definitely a, a different experience okay. there, uh, you know, and, and a great first experience. Really got me, got me going in the work world, you know, from Villanova, partying everything down to, to off to Fargo. No there's not a lot of partying going on. Um, but it was a good experience. I was told there's no parties. <laughs> not much. Um, but, um, but look, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, I think that if you're valued by your company, um, no matter where you are, I think there will be opportunities uh, you know, wherever that company is, is located. You know, you really have to think about it that way, that in the long term, six months in Fargo, a year in, you know, uh, other parts of the world, I mean, if, if the experience justifies it, then, then go for it, you know, and be willing to do it, especially when you're, you know, a little bit on the younger side, um, you know, and, and when you're ready to make a move to a different place, and if you're valued by the company, I think the company will open some doors for you. So do we have any stat majors or minors in the room? Anybody minoring in statistics? Oh, my God. No, thank God. So, uh, sorry about that. Law of averages. Uh, for, for your career, you know, uh, I think my dad told me at a young age, be ready for the opportunity, but be ready for where it's going to strike because it could strike anywhere. Uh, so um, being mobile increases your law of averages. It increases your opportunities. and. Uh, so consider that uh, early in your career. But uh, I think like the other companies represented here, Boeing's global. Uh, we're in every state, I think. Uh, I think we're still in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I think we're on Maui. 
Um, so, you know, once your career develops, you might want to think about settling down. But uh, if your career is vertical or uh, you just want variety in your career horizontally, you got to be open to it. And, and I'll add at the SF, we have what we call our executive candidate program. As you move, obviously, much further down the road, uh, to be on the executive candidate list for any period of time, which, which defines you as identified as having the potential to move to the board, uh, you have to be fully mobile. And you have to accept those experiences. Because if you're going to run a business for us, that's business with the exception of Catalyst is going to be outside of the United States. So those, those types of opportunities will have that demand put upon it. But obviously, that's when you're striving to the board level. I'd probably also throw out that most I mean, companies that are only going to invest in these rotations and, you know, their, their top town. I mean, it's, it's costly to move somebody to Australia for two years. I mean, there's, you're paying salaries and rents. Um, so, I mean, it really is the high performer. So you really need to get in there and, you know, hit the ground running and figure out where you want to go, what you want to do, and you need to be recognized. So it goes back to, you know, the mentoring program and being, being visible to the, the senior leaders of the company that you're the, the future generation. You make a great point. The average relocation cost for an individual per year is between one hundred and fifty and one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Incremental, you know, to well, everything else. Yeah. That's right. It's a lot more than ten dollars for investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not just handing your plane ticket. You no, know, there's, there's a lot going on there with that delegation. We have many freshmen and sophomores here. We have some others that are a little bit older. But uh, are there? some skills that uh, you think are absolutely critical and, and maybe some that perhaps in relatively recent hires you'd say, you know, maybe they would have been a little bit better if they were a little bit better at, at such and such. Are there any of those types of skills, whether they're soft or technical skills that, uh, that, that come to mind that uh, maybe they could be aware of and do something about in the next two years? I want my, my uh, hires to sit in the front first and second. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. No one ever seems to fill those rows. Um, you know, I think where I've seen people be really successful is um, the inquisitive nature that they bring. Um, I, I think it's very easy out of college to come into a large organization and feel a little bit intimidated when you walk into a meeting or to a boardroom or to the opportunity to present in front of a, a team of people. And the people that I've seen do very well quickly in their career are not afraid of the challenge. Um, and I think they balance it well. I think it's the innate sense of uh, balancing the overzealousness with, with the, um, I guess, will to go out and put themselves outside of their box. Um, so I think in general, that's what I would say I look for the most. I don't think any question is stupid. I think the, the learnings that which, of what you get from asking questions is irreplaceable. So I think um, that's where I would say that the most recent hires have been most successful. So I'd say empathy and interpreting. Um, so numbers are numbers, math is math, right? It is. Most of you will be working with folks that don't understand the math, right? So um, being able to empathetically un uh, find out what they will relate to. Uh, so being able to, to speak with people and understand, okay, this is what you relate to. And then being able to interpret the numbers or the data uh, really will help you early in your career. And then as you progress into management, and senior management, and executive level, it becomes being able to uh, vision, uh, be, which is a story, and then take employees and put them in the story so that they completely understand what their role in, in uh, achieving your goals are according to your vision. So, you know, the, the, the building blocks of that is empathy and, and relating, uh, being able to explain Villanova has a, an executive contract at Comcast, and I'm involved in that program. So I asked the students in this financial, uh, you know, it's a high, a high uh, potential group that gets in this, and, and one of the grads was a Villanova grad. But I asked them, so thinking back to when you started, what were, you know, what was something that was really important, and like, did you get it from your college? And the Villanova guy was the first guy to raise his hand. So I thought, you know, I had him for a couple classes. He might say the accounting you learned from me to say Excel. And I was shocked. 
I mean, I know it's important, but here's how he said it was important. He goes, at Comcast, he did some work at PwC first, I think, but at Comcast, when you're a young guy and everybody else knows way more than you about the business, they came to me because I was an Excel guru. And you do a favor for someone older, some younger, <coughs> you call on them later on, they will definitely help you out. Like he needed some really data to get some analysis done and it was really brutal to get. He called this manager and that guy made it happen, for example. So I'm just saying, surprisingly, your skill set, you know, think of yourself as a young person, you're probably good technologically, I'm saying. You have something, you can help somebody older than me, they might turn around and help you back and, and make you look good. And again, this, is, this guy's had a very good career there and he's you know, pretty young, he's a director. And so he just said, it just shocked me what he said. But I'd say, you have a skill set, and various things could come into play to help you out. And that's just one example that you know, I wasn't, wasn't thinking of as something, but he said, the finance people at this company are the Excel gurus, and when you can help somebody else out, uh, they'll help you back in return in some other way, quite possibly, and that, and that might, might make it work for you. In areas that I see, I, I teach a few classes uh, as an adjunct in the evenings at a couple of schools back in New Jersey, and I, I try to identify to the question to gaps. You guys are going to hear a lot of terms as, as you continue forward, but starting with the freshmen and sophomores, I mean, I know there's going to be times because you're new to this that you're going to think, man, you're really working hard. You know, I'm killing myself here. But I, I got news for you. There are other kids all over the country, if not all over the world, that are working just as hard, if not harder. So when you get into that you know, self-pity mode, just get out of it, because it really has no value. Uh, on the other side, when you come in and you come into the work world, you have to completely eliminate the whole thought process about entitlement. Uh, I mean, nothing turns off a person in the corporate world faster than a person who asks questions like, uh, we were kidding, you know, uh, when am I gonna be earning my first you know, quarter of a million dollars and when do I get CFO title? You know, my answer to that is, well, I really don't have an answer for that, but I guess when you earn it, you'll get it. Uh, so, you know, there, th those things, you'll hear words in the corporate world like leadership, entrepreneurial thinking, creativity, innovation. Uh, sometimes it's like grabbing smoke, you know, like everybody has a different definition of, of leadership, you know, teamwork, communication skills. I mean, these are all core competencies for, for most companies. You know, they're, 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 they're looking at you and evaluating you on these types of things. Uh, and at times, there's confusion, to be honest, on both sides, right, to the discussion earlier. Some people have just a different style. They're not a very strong marketer of themselves. They're, they're a little more introverted, you know, but you can't, you can't, what I would say, short sell the quality of that individual just because they have a different style. If you look at interview skills, you know, people, the classic case is when you interview with a person, uh, people tend to fall into the trap that they like people who are like them. They easily identify with that person. They link with that person. You can talk with them all day. Let's go have a beer or whatever because they're similar to you, so it's very easy. That's a, that's a very slippery slope because companies are constantly looking for diversity. And diversity isn't how you dress, how you look. It's diversity of thought. Okay. So these are, these are just a few things. The gaps I see is going from what I would call the university writing to business writing. When, when you guys write things here, you use a certain style, et cetera, I can tell you there are people in, in our organization around the world at BSF, boy, if it's more than five lines, uh, I mean, you're way over. You know, <laughs> you know c conclusion first, and if I need to know more, I'll ask you, right? Because what does everybody have? You have it as a student. You have time poverty. Everybody has that. Right? You never have enough time in your day. You know, you're cramming in a little bit of sleep and on and on and on. You know, we all worked all day. We come out here. We'll leave here around whatever. Some of us will get home at 10, 11, 12, and we're in the office tomorrow morning bright and early, right? They don't say, well, you know, take the morning off tomorrow. You know, last I checked, I never get that email from my boss. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, so it, just a few things there. The leadership side, you know, the teamwork, the communication. You have to work on these things. You have to identify what you do well and things where you feel you need to improve. And you have to push yourself to improve that. The other thing I will leave you with, and I, 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 tell, I told this to all, I have all daughters, uh, is you know, why you're here at the university, your job is to get an education. That's your job. 
It's implied. When, when I come out and interview or I'm hiring people, it's implied that you have an education in accounting, engineering, whatever it may be. I'm looking for those other qualities. I'm looking for like that fire. I want that person that has the fire in their belly that's going to work hard, they're, they're going to take chances, they're going to make mistakes, they're going to be confident, they're going to go after it. You know, you can't just let it, again, come to you and think that everybody's going to help you out and, you know, it's just going to come your way. You have to have that desire, uh, you know, to just grab it and run with it. And, uh, you know, I can't teach you to work hard. Professors here, I can tell you, I've got students that I teach. I can read the room in the first half of class. I know the kids that are going to do just enough to pass. I, I got another short group I can always read. They're not. And I got this other group that are going to beat me up every class because they're going to squeeze every bit of education out of my head and out of that book. And will I have the answer to all the questions? No, I won't. But those students make me a better professor. Uh, and, they, and I learn from them. And, and in the end, they make everybody sitting in the classroom a better student because they're, they're, they're just drawing information from me, from everything else. So you know, work ethic, positive attitude, you know, leadership, however you define it, communication skills, business writing skills. There's a lot out there. There's a lot of gaps. But you guys are very, very intelligent. You can do all this. But those are some of the gaps that I see coming out of the university. I'm sorry, I did it. <laughs> I got a little emotional. I haven't asked about I got young kids. programs, but you know, they probably have that. I, I'm ready if we want to just turn it over to you guys. And you guys can ask questions of our panel. And, uh, and you can direct it to one person in particular. You can say to the panel. 